first went to Auschwitz-Birkenau in 2013 and it was while I was there that I realised that I did want to do a painting about it. I knew I wanted to do a work or dedicate um, a portion of my life to looking into the subject and to expressing what I had learned. I wasn't sure how I was going to approach it. I came home and went into a research period researching the facts. I read a lot of books, I watched a lot of documentaries and then the following year I went back for a second trip and spent longer there just walking around trying to find a way that I could communicate what it was that I saw for other people who may not have the opportunity to go there. I then started the painting physically in 2014 when I returned from that trip. The primary thing I wanted to communicate through the grey zone was the level of calculation that went into creating a place like Auschwitz-Birkenau and also the vastness of the operation and its use in the final solution which was to kill on an industrial scale. I wanted something that communicated the level of order. It was set up, it was built to carry out an extermination process. There are five layers to the painting that, although they're integrated, they can be considered separately. If you're approaching the painting from a distance, the first thing you'll notice are the stripes. I felt they were important to include and they reference the dehumanisation process that occurred in a place like Auschwitz-Birkenau, both for people who had to live and work there, but also people who were just transported through the system there and killed immediately in the gas chambers. It also references the striped clothes that the inmates wore because I felt that was an important part of the dehumanisation process. The second layer that you would see again on approach to the painting are the grooves. The function of the grooves are twofold. The first is to illustrate the destruction that took place in the Jewish communities. When you look at the painting with the grooves, your eyes naturally want to close in the grooves. I wanted to illustrate that that can't happen, that those grooves are permanent. The second thing I want them to illustrate is that when those Jewish communities were destroyed like that, it destroyed something within the human psyche in general, that a place like Auschwitz-Birkenau is now part of human history and it's part of our human psyche, and that it's something that can't ever be erased because whole communities and families were taken, they were gouged out of their lives in Europe. And I think it's our lowest point in history. The third layer is the patterning of the points of paint that you see on the surface of the painting. I wanted to find a way to integrate Primo Levi's description of Auschwitz-Birkenau because I thought that was very important, what it did to human beings to be sent there, what it stripped them of, the level of suffering that it caused. And what he's describing is what happens when you brutalise people, when you dehumanise them, when they're given no agency, when they're given no choice. He's so articulate in his description of what that does to the human psyche, what it does to the human spirit. I took his description in the chapter The Grey Zone and The Drowned and the Saved. And I created a cipher and with that cipher I embedded that in the underpainting so that when I came to do all the points of paint on top I followed the pattern that the cipher had created so it's like his literal description is embedded in the painting. The fourth layer in the painting is the count. 
which makes up the surface layer of the painting, which can only be experienced when you're up close. And it's a very intimate experience. For me, it was really important that the exact number of people who lost their lives in Auschwitz-Birkenau is represented in the painting. I think the most difficult thing to come to terms with when you visit Auschwitz-Birkenau or any place like that, when you contemplate any event in history where there are large numbers and especially when it involves tragedy, when there's a large number of people killed, we lack the comprehension of just how big those numbers are. The agreed number of people that lost their lives in Auschwitz-Birkenau is 1,100,000. So I wanted to include that number in the painting so that when people look at it, they can see just how vast a number that is. And I just felt that each person had to be counted. Um, and to do that, I used uh, little counting sheets. So each counting sheet has 10,000. So there's 1,100,000 points of paint in the painting. The final and fifth layer of the painting is an architectural drawing of Auschwitz-Birkenau and the layout of the camp. I felt it was really important to include that because that shows the level of calculation that went into the creation and running of Auschwitz-Birkenau. The map is to scale and it's taken from an actual architectural drawing of the camp as it was in June 1944. What really strikes you when you visit a place like Auschwitz is just how formal and ordered it was and how everything was placed and measured. The way it features in the painting is it's kind of, it's like a stain. All the layers are stained with that. As I did the successive layers, I kept staining that underpainting. It stains the count as well. The colour of the painting being grey is important, not only because that's where the painting takes its title, from the grey zone. But also because what the colour grey communicates. Often people think it's a lack of colour, but it, it's not. It's actually quite an emotional colour and it's a, the emotion is despair, is a lack of hope, a lack of joy, um, a lack of positive emotion. Five layers that make up the grey zone, the stripes, the grooves, the patterning, the death count and the camp layout, hopefully all come together to illustrate the level of calculation that went into creating and running a place like Auschwitz-Birkenau and its part in the industrialisation of mass killing. The two main resources that I used, aside from my visits to Auschwitz-Birkenau, and I've also been to Yad Vashem two times as well, was two very important books. The first is a book called The Anatomy of Auschwitz, and that has a number of scholars who have specialties in different areas of what took place, and that's where I got all my facts and figures from. It went into the mechanics of Auschwitz-Birkenau, and so I found that very helpful. On an emotional level, which is embedded in the painting as well, it was Primo Levi. He was my guide. Why I decided to paint the grey zone in particular was because of another book that Primo Levi wrote, which is called If This Is A Man. And in that, he describes a recurring nightmare he had while he was at auschwitz monowitz and the nightmare was that he had returned home and he was with his sister and he was telling his sister what he had experienced and she didn't listen or she wasn't interested. And he said that that was the worst nightmare he had while he was there. And not only was it recurring for him, but many people while they were there had the same nightmare. And I felt it was important to create a work that said, I did listen that I took the time to hear what that experience was like and not only heard it, but on some level comprehended it. So anyone who looks at the painting also hears and understands because their greatest fear was not being believed or eventually forgotten. One of 
the main goals with painting the grey zone was to create something that could be used as a teaching tool so that people who don't have the opportunity to visit Auschwitz-Birkenau can learn more about it, that they can see the level of calculation that went into it, that they can see the vastness of the camp and how measured it was in its, in its layout and to see the amount of people that lost their lives within that infernal system. I think it's important that every generation confront the Holocaust if we want to understand what we as humans are capable of, that given a certain set of circumstances, this is what humans will do to each other. It's become glaringly obvious that we as human beings and as a global community are not learning from our mistakes, that we're creating wars that continue to brutalise people. So that gives fertile ground for places like Auschwitz-Birkenau to be formed. We don't seem to be learning our lessons from history. So I felt as an artist that I had a responsibility to at least confront this issue and create something that could be used as a teaching tool because I, I think it, it is our only safeguard. It might be a flimsy safeguard, but it, it is our only safeguard is to know that this is what we are capable of so that we can choose a different path.